Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I'm here to do something a little bit different. I wanted to play a little bit. I have seen many others do tier ranking lists and I thought that would be a lot of fun. So today I am here to do a tier ranking list of screen adaptations. So this means I have read the book and I have watched the screen adaptation, and that can be a movie or a TV show. So I'm ranking how well I think the portrayal of the story in the book translated to the screen. Thanks for joining me. My BA is in film and media studies, so I completely understand that you cannot have a literal translation, or like word for word, page for page, from the book to screen. That is not what I am looking for here. So for my categories, for Nailed It, I want it to have the main story plot needs to be in the screen adaptation. And also it needs to have the spirit of the book. So if the book is humorous, the movie should be humorous. If the story is thoughtful, the movie should be thoughtful. So that would be what would make it into the Nailed It category. Now for Pretty Good, so I would accept that the main story is in there and more or less they have the ambiance of what's going on but it's still but it's not perfect it didn't quite make it to nailed it decent which means they got the story more or less they got the characters there's some issues with time flow and feeling but it's there pretty much then why meaning maybe they took one part of the story and it's there and then everything else they've changed this could be like you have a complete tonal shift or how everything is portrayed just isn't working. And then I have awful, which means they got the story completely wrong, the characters wrong, the spirit of it wrong. And really, the fans would have been better without having this adaptation. So I had fun going through my list of books that I have read to compare to what I have watched and I'm hoping to do a second series in the future but I first have to watch more things so I guess we're just going to jump in and get started now. So to begin off I have A Wrinkle in Time and this is a story that I read as a kid and I remember I liked it fairly well. I watched this recently and I'm going to put it in decent. The actors were great. It was more the story. I, I feel like there was a tonal shift from where the book was to the movie that was portrayed. But the, per, but the movie is good. The actors are good. I don't regret my time watching this movie. So next we have Divergent. And to be honest, I'm trying to remember if I watched the movie first or if I read the book first. Sometimes, so, for some of these, I have, um, I have, oh, I can't speak. For some of these, I have watched the movie first and that made me interested to go read the book. And Divergent's a YA science fiction. And I think that, I think they actually got the story pretty well in there. There are certain subtle things that didn't work but I think that they actually were true to the story that was in the book and they more or less followed the plot of the book. They didn't change anything major. The next I have Ella Enchanted and I realize you can't see her head, but that's okay. So for Ella Enchanted, I'm going to put this in Y because this was something where they took the power. Ella has the curse where she has to obey anyone who gives her a command and that was the only thing that went to the movie. And it's a complete tonal shift. The movie is more, or yeah, the, the movie is more like hokey. I'm not even sure if that's the right way to explain it. Uh, it's more like, let's have fun and play along. And the book was more about self-discovery and journey. And so I, I don't think they got the, the right aspect of this. Also, they aged the characters up and I don't understand why. So next I have Emma, and this is the movie with Gwyneth Paltrow. I actually saw this before I read the book, 
and I don't know if I want to say that they nailed it or if it was pretty good. It was definitely, I watched this movie enough times that I really wanted to go read the book. And I remember when I read the book, I bounced off a moment because I wasn't quite expecting the humor. That could be because I had also read Pride and Prejudice first. I don't know. However, I still really enjoyed the adapt, or I, I still think that this movie adaptation was a pretty true sense of the book. I'm, I think that I'm actually gonna put it in Nailed It because this, Emma is supposed to be absurd and a comedy. And that is what this movie is. Next, I have Ender's Game. And this is another YA science fiction. And I'm gonna put this in decent. I think that they have the main characters, but they really simplified the story, which I can understand why. Um, it took some of the oomph away from the story by doing so. And I think at the end, they kind of changed focus to what was happening in the book. Still, you know, again, I don't feel like my time was wasted by watching it. I'm not gonna watch it again though. Next, I have Fruit Baskets and I'm gonna put this in pretty good. So this is a, or this follows a manga series about a girl who ends up living with a family who different members of the family can turn into Zodiac when hugged by the opposite sex. And I, I saw it the original time in 2001. And I think that this is a pretty good adaptation. Yes, things have changed at the end, but that's typical when it goes from manga to anime, especially when they are doing the anime while the manga series is still going on. But I still think that you get the gist and the heart of the story. But still go read the manga because the manga is fantastic. So next, this one might be a little controversial, is Hal's Moving Castle. And I am putting it in decent. I am a big fan of the book and the movie starts off kind of following the same themes and characters and then they changed who they decided to focus their villain on. For the book, the villain the whole time is the witch of the West and in this one, they made it more technology and war, which was a subplot in the book. It wasn't the main plot. And so that's where I think that it falls into decent rather than pretty good because you change the ending. So next I have Mortal Instruments, which is the movie version of City of Bones. And I actually watched this before I watched, or I actually watched this before I watched, bleh, bleh. I watched this before I read City of Bones. This made me interested in reading the book because it had some interesting ideas. I'm going to put it in decent because it made me go read the book. And there were certain thematic elements that it did hit. Again, the ending was kind of off and the ending all of a sudden switched to a different tone which is why I can only say decent, but it wasn't as horrible as Ella Enchanted. So next I have October Sky, and I will admit I love this movie. Uh, the book that it is based off of is Rock, the book that it is based off of is Rocket Boys, and I reread that book at least once a year. In fact, I need to go reread it because I have not reread it yet this year. Um, as I don't think it quite nailed it. There's still, but I think there's just so much in the memoir that a full movie couldn't get everything, but I think it did a really good job. So I'm actually going to put that at the top of pretty decent and I'm going to move fruit baskets above divergent. Didn't think that, let me move some of these things around. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Sorry, had to mix 
take some, you know, put some things more in order of each category. But yes, so if you like reading memoir, I would go read Rocket Boys. It, it is a very good, October Sky is a very good adaptation of it, but Rocket Boys gives you so much more depth, especially to what Homer, or he goes by Sunny in the book, what he was going through. Next, I have Orin Host Club, and this is one that I actually watched before reading the manga, and it made me want to go read the manga, and the manga is great. And I think that it is pretty good as well. Um, not as good as Fruit Baskets, so I'm going to put it right underneath, but it is still pretty good. The ending is changed. Again, that is typical for anime, and that's probably why I'm not dinging it as much as I am these other movies, but... It did make me want to go read the series, and I love the series. So next, I have Pride and Prejudice, and this is the Colin Firth version. As a teenager, when I really, really was loving Emma, that's the book I wanted to read. And one year for Christmas, my aunt gave me my sister the books Pride and Prejudice and Emma. My sister got Emma. I got Pride and Prejudice. I was a little not happy because I really wanted the Emma book. But I read Pride and Prejudice and really enjoyed it. And that made me go back and watch the 1930s version of this, the 1990, or the 1985 version. And this is the 1995 version. I have seen the version with Kira Knightley, but this is my favorite version. And honestly, I think it nailed it. So it's going up there. So next, which is hard to see, is Seventh Son. And this actually has been Barnes in it, you know, the darling, darkling of Shadow and Bone. And the Seventh Son is one of these classic times where Hollywood has changed the name, has or has given the movie adaptation a different name than the book. The book is Revenge of the Witch. I watched this first, and it's not a great one, but it made me interested to read the book. So I'm going to put it in why, because it does not do the book justice at all. Revenge of the Witch is more, I would say, middle grade series, and they aged all the characters up in this. And honestly, don't watch this movie, but go read the book. And the book again is called Revenge of the Witch. So next I have The Astronaut Wives Club, and this was turned into a mini series. And I actually think, oh, it was done really well. And it's you know, space is one of my passions, one of the reasons why I'm a big science fiction reader, but I also really like reading like memoirs from astronauts. And so when I found out about this, when it's about the wives of the astronauts, I was extremely interested because astronaut memoirs don't give a lot of their wives. It's more focused on what they're doing and not, oh, hey, this is what was going on in my family. And so getting to see the side of it was very interesting for me. And I don't think that they nailed it, but I think that they got really good. And I am going to put this above October Sky, which I really enjoy. enjoy. Um, I think this is a very real look at what was going on in the family lives of the astronauts during the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. Actually, this program follows the seven Mercury astronauts' wives. So they're still figuring everything out. So you get to see what life was like behind them and how they supported their husbands with trying to be astronauts, but at the same time, they're afraid for their lives because this is untested technology. There are a few things in the TV show, like they tried to do a pseudo romance between one of the wives and a reporter. That's not in the book. There's no historical evidence of this. And I think they're trying to make her more likable, which she, I think she's fine. I, I, I don't think you necessarily need to love all the wives, but each wife is unique, just like every relationship is unique. And so I think this is a great adaptation and I really actually want to watch it again. So next I have at the big sleep, which is with Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall and it's been a while since I read it, but it was pretty good. I mean, that's the, that's kind of the thing with old, the old 1930s movies is they were pretty point by point accurate with, with the stories that they were adapting. I have no complaints. 
Next, I have the Book Thief and I also think this was a pretty good adaptation. It's always interesting to see a film adaptation from a book that doesn't follow standard narrative guidelines. And I think that The Book Thief did a wonderful job doing this, especially because, so the book is narrated by death, but the movie has to follow Liesl. And I think you still get a good representation of the heart of the story, even with the narrator being changed. So I do think that they did a pretty good job on this. So next is The Fault in Our Stars. And I, I'm, I liked it better than Divergent. I will say that definitely. Um, I think, it, no, I think it was a decent adaptation from the book. You still get a lot of the angst that you like from YA in it. So yeah, I'm going to say it was pretty decent. So next I have The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. And this is the story of Henrietta Lacks, whose cancer cells became Gila and world famous, and how her family didn't know for many, many years because scientists hadn't actually told them what was going on. And to this day has not been compensated. And that is, author actually talks about how laws have changed since all of this was discovered. And so that's why if you go to do procedure, there might be a clause in what you have, or in your medical procedure saying that any tissues taken can be used for medical science and you won't be compensated for it. And that's because of the issues here. This also goes into more issues on just medical history of African Americans in the United States and how they have always gotten the raw end of the deal. I was going to say, this is a really good adaptation. I'm trying to think if whether like they nailed it or if it's just pretty good. I think I'm going to go with that they nailed it. I remember as I was watching the adaptation, because I had read this book a few years ago, I, it felt like I was reading the book again. Um, just the order and narrative journey and the heart that goes behind this. I think they just did a really great job doing this. So next I have Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. And yeah, this is okay. It wasn't my favorite adaptation. Again, you changed the ending drastically on me. And also this did the same thing that Ellen Enchanted did, it becomes more campy, and I just don't like that. Next, we have The Martian by Andy Weir, and yes, yes, this this one nailed it. it. They got the heart of it. There are different things that happened in the book that couldn't be portrayed in the movie, and they still give a nod narratively to it. I think they did a great adaptation of this. And this one is The Maze Runner. And I'm sorry, some of these thumbnails are hard to see. This is my first time doing it. And so I probably did not pick the best pictures and I apologize for that. But yeah, so this is The Maze Runner. And I am going to also put this in decent. It got me, it got me interested to read the book. And then I liked the book better. There's different narrative choices that happened in the book that just elevated it above the movie. But the movie still portrays everything in the story pretty well. So next I have The Right Stuff, which the book is completely pretentious and all about, they had the right stuff. It's a good old boys kind of book. And the adaptation thankfully pulls back on a lot of that. Um, and it, I would say it ends up being a decent. I've watched a lot of documentaries and videos about space. And this gives the basic well-known stories of the astronauts of the Mercury 7. But you don't get a lot into the personality. It's all about giving them a pretty image. 
So it's decent. Next is the Secret Garden, and this is the 1990s version. Um, sometime in the 1990s, I don't know, I don't remember what year. And this is pretty good. This is a one that I really like. And I think it fits the spirit of the book beautifully. So I'm going to put it on pretty good. Sorry, we got four more. I didn't realize I had so many on here. And as I'm doing this, I realize that there's other books and adaptations that I haven't mentioned, like The Hunger Games. I didn't even include that on this list. I'll have to do that next time. Um, so the next one I have is The Thin Man by Dashiell Hammett. And I love this movie. Um, I'm actually going to put it on pretty good because while I love the movie, and I saw the movie first, it the book is kind of dry. Um, but it does, the movie actually elevates the book. Which, I mean, you can say that means it nailed it, but I don't know. Mm, maybe, it, let's go for it nailed it. If the, if, I think if an adaptation makes you love the movie even better, or sorry, I think if the movie makes you love the story better than the book, I think it nailed it. We're going to go with nailed it. I changed my mind on that one. But this is a fun story about uh, Nick and Nora Charles. Uh, Nick is a retired detective and Nora keeps prodding him to investigate a case that has fallen into their lap. And I just love the dynamics of this couple. And the couple have the same great dynamics in the book as well. Next, I have The Whale Rider and I watched this a while ago and I read this book a while ago and I remember this being a decent adaptation. But I don't remember too many details otherwise. I remember I remember watching the movie first and then I read the book and I was like, oh, the, the movie got the gist of this book. But it, it was that thought, it got the gist. It didn't get the full spectrum. So we're gonna go with, yeah, it was decent. Next, I have the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. Now, this is another one, like The Book Thief, it's interesting because it's not written in normal narrative format. In fact, it's written in a style of letters back and forth, and you can't do that in a movie. They do, they play, a, they play upon that a little bit, but then there's still times where they have to show you what's going on. And I think that this is pretty good. I really enjoyed it and it really makes you want to go back and reread the book but i do think that the actors did a great job portraying their characters in this and getting the story across and next i have is yours mine and ours and i chose the 1960s version because this is a lot closer to the book maybe next time i'll choose the other newer version on here but and then that will have a different answer. But this is a pretty good adaptation. You know, they, it doesn't, yeah. So this is a pretty good adaptation. It doesn't get the full spectrum of Helen's thoughts. Helen is Catholic and she, in her book, she goes more into how she feels about how everything's working out and how it combines with her religious beliefs. And you don't, you're, you're not going to get that in the movie. And you get a, some more hijinks and shenanigans. In reality, in the book, the kids were on board and they were part of the conversation of having the families combined. And in the book, or, well, that's no, right. In this movie, you get to see more of the kids ha meeting the potential new parent and their reactions, but you still get a lot of like fighting and trying to work to or you get more like fighting and playing pranks on one another but overall you still get the feeling that they can meld into a family they will be fine and so that's why i say it's a pretty good adaptation of this well thank you for doing this with me this has been a lot of fun i am going to leave a link to my tier list 
down in the description below. So if you would like to do this with me, or if, so if you would like to do your own version of this for any of the books and movies that you have done, that would be great. If you do your own screen adaptations tier list, please send me a link because I would love to see that. Thank you and have a great day.